guys are awesome. Welcome to the ITS meet and greet. I'm sorry my voice is going out. I apologize. Uh, before we guys let you guys loose on the uh, swag and checking out everything over here, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I do a weekly YouTube series called Gear Tasting. So we're about to do the intro for Gear Tasting right here, all right? So on the count of three, everybody say, welcome to Gear Tasting, all right? One, two, three. Welcome to Gear Tasting! Hey guys, welcome to the gear tasting. My voice is a little hoarse because we are here in fabulous Las Vegas for the 2016 SHOT Show. I couldn't think of a better place to actually film a live gear tasting from than from the floor of SHOT Show. So if you're not familiar with what SHOT Show is, it is the pretty much the largest event in shooting sports around. I mean, there's I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 70,000 people here for the week of SHOT Show. So it runs from Sunday, well, technically it's Monday to Friday, uh, Monday being a range day. So range day happens at a diff bunch of different locations, but there's only one official SHOT Show range day, and I'll get into that in a second. But the show runs from Tuesday morning until Friday afternoon, and there is, there's no way you can actually see everything from SHOT Show. There is just so much going on that if you were to just walk the floor you would, by the time Friday rolled around, you probably still wouldn't see everything that's here. It's just so massive. So what we wanted to do with uh, gear tasting is condense everything we've seen so far down into 10 things that we thought you should know about. So there's still two days of the show left. We wanted to make sure we got a gear tasting out for you guys uh, this week. But even though there's more to see, here's our top 10. Oh, hey, so we went to media day at the range first, and I'll get into that before I get into number one. So media day at the range, what's that about? That is SHOT Show's official range day. So a lot of companies provide firearms there at media day at the range so that riders can actually get hands on and shoot the firearms that they want to write about. So one of the things we saw first off at range day was Cobalt Kinetics and that's kind of our number one. What they did is came out with a rifle called the Evolve and what that's all about is that it automates a lot of manipulations that you typically make with a rifle and I'm not completely sold on automating a lot of that stuff but what it does is that as you're firing the second to last round it drops the magazine right afterwards. So second to last round is fired, magazine automatically drops out of the gun, the bolt comes back goes forward again, just like normally it would, uh, picks up the last round, and as you fire the last round, the bolt automatically throws, gets thrown to the rear, gets locked back automatically. A new magazine is then inserted manually by you. The bolt travels forward automatically again. You don't have to hit a bolt release. Picks up that next round, and you continue firing. So all you're doing is actually feeding it magazines. Um, we had a a good walkthrough from one of the representatives from Cobalt Kinetics that walked us through the gun and, and what it can do. So it was, uh, that was, uh, and obviously these are in no order. So while I say it was our number one, um, these are our top 10. So let's go into number two. Oh, hey, number two was the Silencer Co. booth. Last year they had a killer booth at SHOT Show as well and displaying some of their products this year was an amazing booth. They, uh, I really loved the winter kind of scape that they had to show off some of their new products. We did get hands-on with a few of those, like the Maxim 9 and the Radius at SHOT Show Media Day at the range. The Maxim 9 is their integrated suppressed gun, uh, which now has been changed to accept Glock mags because of user feedback, which is great. And the Radius Range Finder, which can range reflective targets out to a mile and non-reflective targets out to a thousand yards. And it's only got a thousand dollar price point, which is cool. Okay, so number three was the Speed Assault shoe from Solomon Forces. Um, very much like the Speed Cross shoe, and I did a review on that a while back if you guys remember it. So one of my complaints was the tread, and there's definitely a more aggressive tread, but it looks very similar to the Speed Cross shoe on this Speed Assault shoe. Um, there's also a flexible ankle cuff on the back, and units have been using this uh, the government to actually put fins over top of because of that flexible ankle support. And a kind of a funny aside is that 
the European rep for Amerisports, which is the parent company for Sunto, Arteryx, and Solomon, was uh, saying that he was showing the shoe to some, uh, <laughs> some interested buyers from different military units or different units across the country and um, they were expressing wanting to get the shoe. And uh, he said, well, do you, do you have speed assault unit? And he was like, no, we don't, we don't really have one. He was like, well, you, you need speed assault unit to get the speed assault shoe. Oh, hey, number four was Arteryx in their cold weather lineup. So they're launching a lot of new cold weather clothing this year as well as base layers. So they're calling this their cold WX line. And what that is comprised of is uh, tops, so hoodies, jackets, uh, pants, as well as base layers, as I mentioned. They've also got a, uh, a new Naga hoodie, which is a full zip Naga hoodie that's also got a more generous fit. So on the previous versions of the Naga hoodie, um, sometimes they, they were like the Gen 1 was a little tighter. And uh, I actually talked about the Gen 2 on a previous gear tasting, and I really like that piece. There's also the X-Functional pant, which I'm really looking forward to. It's a technical pant with a casual appearance. Oh, hey. Number five was from Daniel Defense, and it was the uh, Gen 2 ISR. So that is their internally suppressed rifle. It's got a permanently welded suppressor, so it's one tack stamp versus two. And this is not something that's new for them by any means. They've done an ISR before, but this is the Gen 2, so a lot of modifications. Uh, currently in this setup, it reduces uh, sound, it sound suppresses to 130 decibels. It also runs for $3,049. Again, single tax stamp for the complete unit, not, you don't need to get one for the suppressor as well as an SBR. Oh, hey, number six was a new Night Force scope that we checked out. So they have a I guess a more cost-effective option for their scopes. Night Force scopes are very well known, but they're very expensive because of the quality too. So this was interesting to see a Night Force scope that was in the just a little above the $1,000 range. And it was a 4 to 14 by 50 F1. It comes in either MOA, MOA, or mil mil. And I've gone through on the gear tasting before what that's all about. Um, it is a first focal plane scope, but the difference being that it has different glass and reticle options from the higher priced models, um, as, as well as some different uh, elevation adjustments that you would find on uh, more ex expensive scopes. Oh, hey, number seven was some new armor from Cry Precision. So their LVS is a 3A armor, but it's designed to be worn next to skin. So it's 3D formed to contour the body, as well as NIJ level 3A certified and it's got some micro an or uh, antimicrobial fabric as well. So I really liked the, the appearance of this as well as the contouring or the, you know, what they call their 3D forming. And I think it's a great option. I guess the concern is, you know, s where's perspiration going to go? But, you know, if they've got antimicrobial fabric, hopefully it's not a concern. Oh, hey. Number eight is uh, Surefire with their IntelliBeam technology. So what that does is adjust the light output on one of their devices down to a different level based on the environmental conditions. So when it senses close objects, it automatically reduces down from 600 lumens to somewhere around 15. It's also available in a handheld model or as a scout light configuration, which is weapon mounted. Oh, hey, number nine is shield sight with their reflex mini and SIS sights. So the reflex mini, uh, actually, this company used, has still been manufacturing the J-Point for another company, and Reflex Mini is their newest mini red dot offering. So it's got a battery tray, aluminum housing, it's only 0.6 ounces, um, extremely lightweight and low profile. It comes in a 4 or 8 MOA red dot, runs about $330 and will be available in the second quarter. The SIS is a rail-mounted red dot site which with a extended battery amount can reach out to six to 10 years of power. Oh, hey, number 10 is a couple of uh, apparel pieces from Outdoor Research. So one of the things that was really cool is they had a jacket that uh, was integrated with a new Gore-Tex material called Topo. It's a four-way stretch material, which is pretty neat. So it was available on some of the areas. It's a very expensive fabric, as Outdoor Research was telling us, but areas like the lats and stretch points on the jacket are reinforced with this. So you still get the waterproof properties of Gore-Tex, 
but now in a four-way stretch. I thought that was a pretty cool, pretty cool uh, thing that they did. That was a jacket based on their Axiom jacket. Um, then there was the Maritime uniform, which is available in mass gray, which is one of my favorite colorways for uh, camouflage and uniforms. It is fast drying. It's got some super fabric reinforcements on the knee and the elbows. Um, and it's uh, comparable. Um, well, actually, first, let me say that it can take cry knee pads or Arteryx knee pads. So, uh, and they're also shooting for price points that are uh, kind of relative to cry pricing, if you're familiar with that. Then there was also the uh, muzzle brake uniform. It's uh, lightweight, fast drying, hydrophobic. Um, again, kind of uh, price like cry uniforms, and it's made with uh, Gore EPFD material. So that was very interesting too to take a look at. I'm really looking forward to hopefully being able to try out some of these, these uniforms and what they've been coming out with. I really feel like this was definitely something that we enjoyed seeing it at SHOT Show. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed our gear tasting from SHOT Show 2016. Remember if you have questions, while we didn't answer them on this episode, we will in the future. So use the pound tag gear tasting on any social media outlet and we will find your questions and get them answered. Thanks again.